And it's time to talk about optimizing or continue our discussion about optimizing resources for success. And I'm really pleased to introduce Bob Repenning. He's with Lee County. And uh, he's going to talk about the use of volunteers in land stewardship. And it's a really critical aspect of much of the management of our properties is, is the use of our you know, wonderful, wonderful volunteers that do such a great job in addressing the needs for these properties. I met Bob in 1988, you know, one year before Brooke. And so uh, he's been involved in these type of issues for a very long time. I'm really looking forward to your presentation. Bob Repenning. All right, I work with Lee County Parks and Recreation. And um, the area I cover is Six Mile Cypress Slough. And I also do some resource management at Lakes Park. Um, I'm not in the 2020 program, which is the better known land um, stewardship program in Lee County. Um, and today I'm going to talk about using volunteers. Not being in 2020, there's very little money for land management. Um, fortunately, there's been land management going on in Six Mile Cypress Slough for the last 40 years um, since the first parcels were acquired. Um, and, you know, one thing about Six Mile and its boardwalk and everything, I think it was the example that sold the public on what 2020 could do for Lee County. Um, so it's very important to get high quality um, rec or natural recreation type of activities onto your parcels. And using volunteers is, is very important. This group here I put in the title slide is a group of bankers from all over the country. They had their national meetings in Lee County. Um, they were supposed to have three in a row, but everything collapsed and they only had this one. Um, but they picked Lee County Parks and Recs as a place to come and do their, um, a, during their national meeting, they have a um, thing where they help out a local group and they wanted to come and do a conservation project in Lee County, contacted our volunteer coordinator um, with Parks and Rec and she set it up. This is actually on a 2020 parcel. Um, they brought almost 200 people out, took a lot of coordination. They bought all the herbicide we use, all the tools we use for cutting, all the gloves, the, um, both work gloves and plastic gloves. Um, eye protection, and they left it all when they were done. So it was a good move. I'm still using it with my volunteers now. Um, most of these people, unfortunately, in the next year or two, lost all their lost their jobs. The bank has currently um, closed all their offices and is an online bank now. Um, but they did a good job for us. The, they worked one morning. The equivalent hours they put in in that morning was about three full-time positions for a year, so you can get a lot of value. They cleared about 40 acres of sparse Malaluca out of um, open prairies and um, some uh, cypress stones. The types of volunteers I use are college students, interns from the colleges, both that are doing it for college credit and also come afterwards to get some work experience. This gives them work experience in the field that um, complements their classroom work. And um, internships are also a good way for them to get good references when they go out into the workforce. A lot of retirees that want to stay active um, come down. I get some of those. Um, I don't get so, I get groups and uh, um, other people that fall out of the woodworks, and I'll show you some of those later on, call up and say, we want to do good work for you. And you say, okay, this is what we do. And, oh, that sounds great. And they'll bring out a big, big chunks of people. Um, this is a brush reduction project at the work. There's one staff member hiding in there, um, <laughs> Anissa. But um, that was an example of some of the problems you have with working. That was a project I had set up for 10 people. I had five people sign up and two people show up. So it was two staff members and two volunteers. Um, 
The types of volunteer work that we have are environmental education. Here you can see in this slide that we have both trail guides up on the um, boardwalk with the group and then a resource um, stewardship volunteer in the water. Um, and usually when I have people working doing resource management around the boardwalk itself where we're going to encounter people, I'll also have somebody to explain to them what we're doing. Um, we do a lot of exotic plant removal. That's the main thing we do. Fortunately, at Six Mile, most of the major um, stands of Malaleuca, Brazilian pepper and stuff were cleared years ago. So what we're doing now is going through and finding regrowth, um, seedlings, that kind of stuff, and treating those with volunteers. And it's, it's a good use of volunteers because um, it's something they can accomplish. They get to see new areas in your preserve. Um, it's something if you hired a contractor to do, he would charge you by the acre and he, you would spend a lot of money on just having people wandering around in the woods um, looking for scattered plants. Um, we do old fence removal with volunteers a lot and um, trash cleanup if we find piles of trash in the woods. We can haul people in and get it cleaned up in a few hours versus staff doing it over a long period of time. And then I also use them for resource inventory, going out and finding the areas that um, need to be treated, um, going in the areas and doing bird counts and that sort of stuff. Um, I put environmental education in, and you might say, why, why would you have environmental education and land stewardship? But the public knowing what land stewardship is and why it should be funded and the type of work we do and when they come to a boardwalk or, or a park. Um, boy, I need to speed this up. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. Um, but the types of work they do, the trail guides, at our information desk in the interpretive center, um, given in the classrooms and in our summer camps. Exotic removal, we do um, hand removal work. Um, we go in and spray place and kill it, um, like Brazilian pepper where you basil spray it and, and blow it in, cut and stack and brush pack. And it's important to let the people know when you're going in there, let them know what type of work you're doing. Um, hand removal, things like water hyacinths in small ponds. You can get a bunch of people in there, pull it up, bag it up, and haul it out. And um, it saves you from spraying. Um, we do cattail removal in the areas where we want to have it open for um, visu visual. Um, that last one was removing Suspania, which is a native plant. But it, when the ponds dry down in the, in the um, winter time, that'll come up in um, the bare mud, and then it, it blocks your view of wildlife and stuff. So in the areas where we have public visitation, we do the cattail and Suspania control. Cutting and stacking is... Um, Something I do in thin stands of Malaluca where we can go in, cut down stuff, and um, pile it up. Um, a lot of times I don't even treat them um, with herbicides if it's an open area like these. I don't treat them with herbicides while I'm out there with the volunteers. I can go back with a backpack sprayer and um, treat the re-sprouts from the stumps with a lot lower um, volume of chemical, which saves money. Um, and also, I'm not exposing the volunteers to chemicals. We do do that, though, and hand spraying is one of the things we do. Here we're going through a open pine flatwood, grassy open pine flatwood, and cutting um, Malaluca seedlings that are coming up. Um, also, the going through the woods, um, lining people up about 100 feet apart and having them zigzag through the woods looking for pepper and Malaluca, ear leafication, all the rest. Here's some Brazilian pepper, the brown plants you see here are dead peppers from um, a basal spraying area. Brush reduction is something I do. Um, six Mile is 
an old preserve, so the typical old preserves, you're going to save a swamp, you're going to save a mangrove, so you buy the swamp and mangrove. Um, but you don't buy anything around it, and um, we have a lot of small patches of pine flatwoods that are in um, basically residential neighborhoods near hospitals, near airports. Um, so, and they've been um, overgrown with shrubs, um, both native, mostly native stuff now because the exotics have been killed. But we go, I go in with volunteers and we do brush reduction. We have done some mechanical removal. Um, cutting it and hauling it out um, is, or stacking it up on site is a lot, um, it's a lot less damaging to the land itself than um, going in with the mechanical stuff. You don't end up necessarily after you're done with a dog fennel forest. Um, resource inventory and monitoring. Um, we use a number of groups. I have a group in Lee County called the Bird Patrol, and they started with a few of our projects doing, um, going in and doing bird watching and keeping lists and giving them to us. When I came to Lee County seven years ago, I got this big pile of lists, and they said, here, take care of this. Um, and I am trying to figure out, what do I do with this data? And then I found this thing called Bird Patrol, run by the um, Cornell Laboratory, where you can submit the data online. It goes in a national database that can be used by your organization, and it, it does statistics and bar charts and stuff with your data. It was great. Um, bird Patrol volunteers on our on 149 different sites in our thing, in our um, parks and preserves, have recorded over 4,000 checklists. They rank in the top 10 each year for the number of checklists turned in by one group in Florida. Um, and that data is very valuable. We also use them for other inventory going in and looking for exotic plants. In the bottom left-hand corner here, these two interns here are sitting in the back there. They're now employees of Lee County Parks and Recs in the 2020 program. And um, it's, interns are a great way to, um, are a great way to interview people because you have several years to do that interview. You can see how they work, see how you get along with them. Um, and sometimes you make mistakes even with all of that. No. <laughs> but, um, but it's also great for the student if you don't have a job because they have a job reference in the field that they want to go into in, you know, doing actual work rather than just classroom. Um, other activities our volunteers does, our friends group, um, they, uh, run our nature center, they got funding for the nature center, they got a quarter of a million dollars in funding for it. Um, they told the county, you build it, we'll staff it, and they've been doing that. Um, when you walk in, you're meeting a, a volunteer, not a uh, staff member. And um, other activities, Boy Scouts did a bluebird trail on us. Um, we've done a little bit of planning in some areas um, where it was needed. This was on Lakes Park. Um, when you have volunteers, you need to train them, supervise them, and provide them incentives and, re and reward recognition. Um, we do that. Other issues, you need to make sure you have workman's comp for them or it puts you in a liability situation where they could come after you. You're still in a liability situation. Your company or organization or government entity would be sued. Um, you have to explain to them carefully what the working conditions are. Vary their tasks so they don't get bored. Um, here's a uh, volunteer serving as a weather um, person at a um, control burn. Um, here's some of the food I provide the volunteers so that, that they're happy. Actually, that's food the volunteers brought to us on one of the <laughs> parties we showed them. Um, and then having fun with them is, is really important, and I think that brings them back. 
Um, Southwest Florida's a little different. Some of the people I've talked to in Orlando and, and Tampa area, they get a lot younger volunteers than I do as far as adults. And that's it, thank you. I don't know if this Well, we have time for some questions. Any questions for Bob? Oh. What mechanism do you use for the volunteers to find the opportunities for them to connect with you and sign up? Lee County Parks and Rec Recreation on their website has a volunteer section where you can sign up. It has a um, application, a mini application you'll send in at first and a checklist of things that you might be willing to do or interested in doing. Um, our environmental education program that Mary Rood and Heather Gannap run, they have over 100 volunteers and several of them are, um, come out with me also. Um, with the colleges, they um, contact us. Um, we're on their contact list as somebody who can provide environmental um, volunteer opportunities. They have one at Gulf Coast University, they have one um, class that requires 10 hours of volunteer service in an environmental related thing. And a lot of kids will come out and do that with us and then come back and do the uh, other 70 hours they have to do for graduation. So those are ways that I get them in. And then I have people call me right off the street and say, I used to do this for a living, you want help. And any additional questions for Bob? Okay, well, let's all give Bob a round of applause. Thank you for the presentation.